All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another week here at the One Number YouTube channel. I'm Eric Parker, and today I wanna to walk you through some ideas uh, and tips and kind of creative tricks uh, that you can use when utilizing reference lines uh, in tap sheets. So let's go ahead and get it started with the basics. We're gonna create a constant reference line. Um, so with a constant reference line, you're just looking for a single line going across the entire worksheet. So in this case, how many subcategories had a discount rate above 10%? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I actually really like to use the analytics pane to create the constant line. So I go to analytics, grab my constant line, drag and drop this to uh, the worksheet on where it says table. And then it says, what value do I want? I want 0.1 or 10%. Okay. And that's really it. That's creating a constant line. There's a few kind of custom formatting things I can do. I can right click and uh, select uh, edit if I want to. When I could make this line a little bit, you know, thicker or darker. Uh, if I want a custom value, you know, I could do that. But honestly, this is probably pretty good. Uh, maybe I would want to, you know, add a calculated field to this. I'll just kind of do a quick one here. So I'll just say, okay, is the value greater than uh, 10%? And then let's just highlight the ones that are. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, true pops out to you as an orange, false uh, is a little bit more subtle and kind of in the background as blue. All right, up next, average reference lines. Okay, so let's say I'm trying to answer a question like this. What was our average profit per subcategory within each larger category? Uh, once again, the analytics pane could just be our friend and make this easy for us. So I'm going to go ahead and grab average line, drag and drop this to my sheet and we have a decision to make. Do I want to drop it on table, pane, or cell? So sort of just a quick definition of those. Table is sort of synonymous with worksheet. So do I just want a single average going across my entire worksheet? Uh, pane, I think about this as sort of a parent level dimension. So we have subcategory, which is the child level dimension. And then we have category, which is the parent level dimension. So if I want the average at the parent level dimension level, uh, which is category, that would be great. That's what we're going to do. Um, cell is sort of synonymous with data point. So if I drop the average line on cell, it would give me an average for every single bar, which would just be the same as the bar. So nope. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and drop the average line on pane. And then I'll see I've got a different average for each of these sections. Uh, so let's say that I want the, it to say average and then actually tell me that number. I'll probably need to edit this reference line. So I'm going to right click on the reference line, select edit. And uh, I'm going to customize the label here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this drop down and say custom. I'll put AVG colon. And then I'm going to use this little arrow here on the right side to insert my value. So now I can see that the uh, category with the highest uh, average profit per subcategory is technology at 36,000 and the lowest would be furniture at 4,600. Um, one cool thing that you might not know is that if you select bars or select your data points, I should say, it'll draw, it'll draw an updated average reference line for you based on that selection. So let's say I'm like, wow, it seems like technology's average could have been even higher if it wasn't for machines. What is the average of just those three largest categories? Whoa, it jumps all the way from $36,000 to $47,000. So just a few thoughts on the uh, average line. Okay, this one gets a little bit trickier, a field-driven reference line. Uh, so you can see here, uh, the question on this worksheet is how did sales from this year compare to last year? Um, so I've already got our 2021 sales being represented here uh, on this worksheet. Um, so now I would want to drop a reference line to see are those values falling above or below our 2020 sales, okay? So uh, probably not going to be a good use case for the analytics pane because there's no way to grab a, a line and uh, immediately make it based on a field. So I do want to right click on my axis and select add reference line. And then notice that I can select a field that I want the reference line to be based off of, but right now 2020 sales is not showing up. Um, so this is really important, maybe the most important thing I'll say in this whole video in order to reference a field in a reference line, that field has to be active and present somewhere in your worksheet. 
So it could be on the column shelf, it could be on the row shelf, it could be anywhere in the marks card, but it just has to be somewhere in your worksheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and abandon this. And what I'm gonna do is grab 2020 sales and just drop it on tooltip in the marks card. Doesn't change anything visually. In theory, it now shows up when I hover over. Uh, but now if I right click on my axis and say add reference line, uh, I can say, notice this conversation again, scope. I can say per cell or per subcategory, I want a value for every, or I want the 2020 sales value uh, for all of these. So because it's already aggregated, because this is already some of 2020 sales, I really don't think this aggregation here makes a difference. So kind of fine, like, you know, whatever I want it to be should stay the same, especially because it's also at a per cell level. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I don't actually really want those labels. So I'm just going to turn those to none. And uh, maybe I'll just get the reference line to kind of pop out a little bit, you know, maybe I'll I don't know, maybe this is a bad idea, but I'll go ahead and make it a bold yellow line. Um, so now I'm just going to go to my title and I'll just color code it in here. I had sales this year, so those are blue. Compared to sales from last year, those are yellow. And then if I want to do a calculation, you know, change the color of the bar, if it met the value from last year or not, yeah, I could do that, but kind of leave that as is for now, save that for another day. So again, reminder, field has to be in your worksheet to be able to reference it in a reference line. So you can see like machines fell pretty short. We're only at $43,000 this year and we sold 55,000 last year. All right, and this is maybe the most advanced calculation that we'll look at in the video, which is how can you use a hidden reference line to keep an axis uh, fixed at the largest possible value so that when you're flipping between filters, your axis range isn't changing and creating change blindness for your user. So first of all, let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, so right now, the question is, how did sales perform in the central region? So notice that I've got a region filter over here. And as I'm switching between different regions, very subtly, the axis range is also changing. So phone sales being the largest bar here looks very comparable to chair sales being the largest bar here. The difference is that the central region axis goes all the way to $80,000, whereas, what was it, the south region axis only goes to $55,000. So I've seen people come up with solutions for this in the past where they're like, well, why don't we just fix the axis, right? So let me just, you know, edit the axis and just say, hey, this thing should just start at zero and go to 100,000 and just leave it like that. So that that does work, that's a possibility. Um, your problem with doing this would be what happens when values you know extend beyond that. So I actually have chairs in the West going all the way up to $101,000. I don't wanna have to come back here and constantly be editing this axis and trying to change the uh, you know end value based on when my data is updating like no, thank you, right? So what I'm gonna do is just tell it to be an automatic axis range. What I wanna do though is figure out what is the singular largest value, you know, uh, between the subcategories and the regions. So in this case, let's just do a quick flip through here to see uh, 85,000, 100,000, 58,000, 101,000. So in theory, if I could create a reference line, which would always figure out which is the largest of the bars across these four regions in these 17 subcategories, and I could just sort of hide that in the background of my worksheet, um, then, you know, we should be good. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to create a calculated field. And I'm going to use, let me think through this real quick. I'll call this my uh, region subcategory hidden reference line. So what I'm gonna tell Tableau to do is, I'm gonna use a fixed function. I'm gonna say fixed on region and subcategory, return my sum of sales. So what this is gonna do is, again, four regions, 17 subcategories, so that would give us 68 uh, unique values. This is going to calculate all of those 68 individual values, you know, each combination of region and subcategory. Then I'm gonna ask Tableau to give me the maximum of those 68 values. 
And then I just had to do this during a class last week, which is why this is top of mind. Otherwise, this would probably take me an extra minute to figure out or 10 minutes. The last thing I want to do is wrap this one last time in curly braces. So that what that's going to do is not only is it going to figure out which is the maximum of those 68 values, by wrapping a value like this in the curly braces, you're telling Tableau, figure out what that value is and then um, basically return it for every single row of data in my data set. So now, no matter what region or subcategory or whatever that I have filtered to, um, it's going to return that $101,000, you know, for any row of data that's left after the filters. I'll go ahead and drop that calculation in the uh, description below if I can as well, so you can grab that and modify that for your own needs. So just to show you how this works, if I drop this on label in the marks card right now, notice this is telling me 101, 781. Doesn't matter what filter is selected, it's just returning that value over and over again. So what I wanna do with this, uh, remember from our last little section there, I'm just gonna drop this on detail. I don't need to see it, I just need it to be here. I'm gonna add a reference line. And then I'm gonna say um, across the entire table, return to me this hidden reference line value. I don't need to see a label for it. In fact, I don't even need to see a line. I'm just gonna turn the line off entirely. And now what I can have happening is the axis, the values are changing, but notice that that axis is staying stable and it's not fixed in the traditional sense, right? If my data were to truly update and there was a new largest value, that reference line is also going to update and my user can't see it. So I hope that's helpful. I think that can be super helpful in a lot of use cases from the standpoint of your user is probably not going to be super aware of when that access is changing. And as a result, comparing values, um, you know, across different segments or regions or whatever that might be, uh, they could um, have an unrealistic expectation of look how large this value is, but it's actually half the size of the largest value when the other filters apply. So I think you get the idea. I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks for dropping in. I hope this was some helpful ideas around how you can utilize reference lines. Um, and we'll look forward to catching you on another video here, the One Number YouTube channel, uh, very soon.